Hi all. Uh, today's going to do a quick sort of partial review of this uh, along with some tips on how to deal with mini art. Uh, this is now my third one and I've been successful with the first two with a couple of little steps that seem to help. Anyway, first of all, this one arrived in an unflattened or flattened box, I should say, from the Ukraine. And the number is 360036, the French Street. And this is going to be for my uh, Arnhem Bridge Too Far para figures, British paras. Uh, when you're looking at model art, keep in mind they do ones with the dial base and other ones where it's just the building. And if you're looking for dial, that information's fairly important. Uh, I'll quickly show you the base. That's their base. Now keep in mind this whole area is building. So if you want to do a vehicle, you're restricted to about this area. And while I like many art, I find a lot of their models or their dioramas, especially with these bases, are really too small. For most of the models we want to do to set up a diorama. So fortunately they give you a picture like this for most of their dioramas uh, on their website, a breakdown of the parts, and they usually include what we'll call the floor plan. So if you compare the overall measurements they give you to that image, you can get an idea of how big it is and how much of that is going to be usable. Some of them are very, very limited in the actual street space they give you. Now to give you an idea of the size of this, and this is one of their biggest ones, they do other ones that are actually two-piece plates to form the base. So this is probably one of their bigger single-piece ones. That's a 251. I'll show you a 250 half-track, which is about as small as you can get. Well, what else is within the grasp? How about a Kabul? But a smaller model as we'll make. So that gives you an idea of what we're up against. Now you could use the sidewalk for the vehicle as well. But that means with a track, or sorry, with a tank, you're going to have to play with the tracks and adjust them. Same thing with a, a vehicle. Uh, you're either going to have to flatten tires or adjust the suspension to make an allowance for that curb rise if you do use that space for the vehicle. Anyway, this is a big kit for that. You've already seen the base. This is only some of what's included. Let's adjust things. And this is a big deep box. Again, the box came unassembled and everything was in a bag. I just put the box together to put everything in. But there are tons of parts. Now, for those who have never done it, you get stuff like this, which is vacuum formed styrene. And we'll come back to this in a minute. Many arts vacuum formed stuff is really good, lots of detail, especially considering vacuum forming, from what I understand, is an old technology. Uh, however, they're injection molded stuff. I have two sprues of everything with this kit. Now, this one's not bad. This one on the other hand, you can see it's very thin, it'll come right off without a problem. Yeah, I can pretty much almost punch right through that flashing there. But their quality is getting a little bit bad. And seeing as I've got the door in my hand, I'll break out the 135th scale ruler and show you one of the things that annoys me with mini art. They use the same sprues all the place, all over the place. Let me get out of that so you can actually see. So this is a fairly standard sprue for them. I don't know if you can make that out. But yep, if you can see it in the camera, the lights hit them in just the right spot. That door is in scale 8 feet tall. And that's the way Mini Art does it. 
every time because it's the same door. Now, I think there may have been a couple of buildings back in the 30s and 40s when they were built that had eight foot doors, but they'd be government buildings and double doors. I certainly don't think it was that common on houses and farms and everything, but that's the door they use. Anyway, I promised you a couple of tips. First of all, we're scribing. You hear it described a couple of, or by other people, they don't get into it that much. Instead of using your actual main edge of the blade, let me get a little bit more comfortable. Oops. Instead of using your normal front tip of the blade, we're actually going to cut with the very tip by drawing backwards with the blade. Okay, we're going to use the back edge. That way it's just the tip. It doesn't matter so much if it's an old worn out blade. The tip is normally still at its very tip sharp. Now what that does, this piece is not very useful. I've done it on straight edges. It doesn't help that much. Here's a curved piece. This one. Let's move this over a bit before we get some room. Now, if you were to try and use your blade in the conventional fashion, I'll up again. That's a little bit better. Your blade is going to grab all these things. Unless you have complete attention the entire time, when you pull, eventually it's going to grab something and you're going to slice over it, which is not what you want, because the next time you do that, the blade is going to follow the same route. So by scribing, you're using the back, try and keep it as upright as possible, as opposed to a low angle, and just pull it. The noise is terrible at times, live with it. Okay. Now we're not looking for absolute perfection. Oop, just do it there. But what we don't want to do is remove part of our model, so it's better to take too little then take too much. I'll we'll get to that in a little bit later. Scribing is a slow process. It's repetitive. Because all you're doing is essentially gouging or scribing a tiny little bit of a line in there. Once you've got it done once or twice, your line, you can go a little bit quicker, apply a little bit more pressure. Just it there. Okay. Again, when you're scribing, you don't have to be perfect. It's better to remove too little than too much. Once you've done it in one direction two or three times, you can go back and you can scribe the reverse direction. Because you're not going to get it perfectly from the one direction. Now I'm going to stop because I'm sure the noise is probably not thrilling you. Yeah, it's a little awkward. I'm having to stand so I can see what the camera sees. I normally do this sitting down. And you're going to need some pliers. But once you've scribed, you've got four or five, perhaps six good scribes through there. You'll be able to bend that and crack it off. And it'll just fall away. And if you have any points that do hang, rescribe it, or even use the sharp edge. So I keep some pliers around because sometimes mini art doesn't give you much to grab onto. Certainly not enough to generate some leverage. You'll end up just grabbing smaller pieces like this. Try and keep, if you're breaking this edge here, try and keep a finger there equal to where you're actually applying the pliers. That way, if the cut isn't that great, you're not over flexing this piece of plastic. This stuff will bend if you bend it.
too much or too far. So by giving it some support, you're putting all the stress along the line you've made, and that's where it'll break. And you just slowly work your way up through pliers, or by hand if there's a little bit more to grasp onto. So that's how it's scribing. The other tip I've got for you is anywhere where you've got straight lines meeting at 90 degrees, such as windows and doorways, I always just pre-drill a little hole right in the corner. Just a small drill bit. That's actually the same size I use for drilling out the crazy glue nozzle, or CA glue nozzle. And it's the same thing. Okay. It's scribing. Because that way, if we go this way, let me make sure I'm still on camera, yep. There's a chance if I go by the knife edge and alter the angle, the blade will right up into areas I don't want to cut. By keeping it here, and by using a hole to start my point, I get a consistent point instead of butchering the corners, which are hard to fix. And it's the same thing. Just draw it a couple of times, and scribing, by the way, is messy. Especially on a kit this size. You can see everything coming loose and creating all that. What I'll have to do later on is come back and get this corner as, as I go, unless I complete move it to such an unnatural angle that I'm not comfortable holding, then you know, I'm missing a quarter of an inch here. I need to scribe same thing on the other side. But the holes uh, it's almost like pre-drilling corners and woodwork. It just gives you a defined spot where it stops. It weakens what would be the strongest part of the plastic. Now, doing the windows, you're going to have to go completely through. You can't bend or snap. You've got to go all the way through. You can tell. Let's go back to the original one. Because the sound disappears. Now the sound's gone, I know I'm completely through. Now, that's why you have to use a cutting mat. You'll make a mess of whatever's underneath, and you'll end up dulling the blade too quickly. But you can see from there to there is done. And now if the camera's picking that up, well, that's cut right through in about four or five passes. The other thing I'll do A lot of the window joints, yeah, there's a lot of pieces in this one. And this one is a pain, or this piece in particular. Most of the mini arts are just two walls, like this. This one has three for each building, and there's two buildings. So one of the things you'll have to do, now the instructions cover it. On the corner pieces where they join, you do have to remove part of the plastic along with here. The problem is the inside or front piece in this case leaves this wall unsupported because it's also got a 95 or sorry 45 degree piece that will butt against it and come back this way. But what it means is I've got no support here. So I've got to try and I've got to make sure everything in here is as good as I can make it for strength. Now one of the things I'll do, the window cutouts, I save, I cut them down. I'll take a sliver of that and join it here. Well, probably two in this case. To form either a biscuit or a tongue, depending on what your background is. I guess the woodworkers would probably call it a biscuit. Everybody else would probably call it a tongue that sticks out just a little bit beyond this plastic to strengthen this joint across the top here. Uh, sometimes many arts windows are not completely straight. They'll aim in towards each other. They'll come together and angle towards the joint. 
if they do that you can't use the biscuit or tongue technique to get some additional strength there but the doorways should be flat on the inside once they're done along here so I'll probably put a biscuit or tongue here and I'll see about doing it on the windows especially on the outside to give me the strength I'm not getting from our missing joint there which hold on to these. The other thing I do, like I said, I don't sweat leaving small bits on my cutouts when I'm scribing, like here. That's not supposed to be there. Same with some roughness here. I'm not worried about that at this point. Okay? Because what you really want, because you've got so little contact, even on the ones where the outside of the walls do meet, is you've got very little contact and it's all these raised well, when you look at it from the back the raised portions so instead of risking gouging away too much and losing contact let's say this point I'd rather have it the odd bit left high from this perspective and I'll take some relatively fine sandpaper In this case, it's some cheap 120 grit. You can go finer if you want. Don't go too much uh, coarser. And applying pressure well, about half of it at a time. Just rub it around back and forth. Knock off the high spots. Do the same thing on the other side. Keep your pressure even. Again, don't press in the middle because you'll just bow the plastic a little bit. So keep even pressure. Do the same thing on the other piece. And eventually you'll find you get a fairly tight joint when you go to put them together. Uh, which is also the time to add the biscuits, not before. Okay. Now, when that's done, you end up with something like this. This is all clamped. There's still a few bulges and high points here that don't belong. Once this is actually glued up, that's when I'll come back and worry about the small stuff and I'll start trimming away what doesn't belong. Okay. Uh, there's a few spots that are high. There's one there, there. Okay. And as I'm doing that, I'll apply some more glue. By the way, uh, to me, extra thin does work on this type of plastic, works quite well. Especially in spots like this. This can come off. It's not holding well. You need fairly reasonably weak clamps. Uh, something like these would almost be ideal, but they're not. Well, it's working in there. I was trying them down here earlier, and they're not really wide enough to get on there. You just want to hold the pieces together, not crush them. And you especially don't want to let the clamp go much further than the joint itself. If you end up trying to clamp like this, again, you'll bowl the plastic down and you'll lift this edge up as that bows in. So once, I'm not really going to start on this one because I only glued this about an hour ago, but it should be safe to take all this off. What I'll do is I'll come back along with the actual edge of the knife and where there's some high spots where it's misaligned, I'll actually take them off. If I expose too much, I'll add some more to me just to strengthen what I'm leaving behind. Then once all that's done, this one's really bugging me. Give me a second. Take a metal file, once I've done that, usually the sharp edge is not round, and I'll work it back and forth, so I've got some misalignment there, I'll trim that down, but with that you can add back in the mortar lines by turning it the corner in, 
Now you can sort of recreate the mortar. The line that might be there, although it probably wouldn't be on a broken wall, but do as you wish. And then that's when I'll break out my uh, putty. I use Tamiya and I'll add it in to fill any holes or any really horrible misalignments. And then I'll treat it like regular Tamiya. I'll sand it down and try and reshape it and get it back to where it should be. So hopefully those tips help make it a little bit easier. This vacuum forming stuff uh, can throw you a little bit and again trying to use it to actually cut the plastic off its sheets is probably where most people go wrong uh, and will end up cutting off bits that you want it to actually keep on there. This isn't bad. This one completely matches here. Get rid of it. And by having waiting until I've sanded means that any bulges are either on one spot or on two pieces, both pieces, like that one. It's supposed to be a piece of broken timber. And now I've created a little bit of a hole there. That'll get filled in later with some Tamiya putty. But I've got more strength. Because this stuff, when it's cut, you can see it just flexing. So to try and clean up stuff like this, it's going to flex in all sorts of directions on you. And you're not going to end up with something straight at the end. And that's the main thing is to get this whole plane, if you want to call it that, smooth. Same thing with its partner, with the other piece of plastic. So they will lay down properly together. If you can manage that, bumps and knobs and misalignments that you're going to get in the rough areas especially they're not hard to deal with okay you're not being forced to basically rebuild the entire section you're just either taking away stuff or adding a little putty to fill some small holes and you can see that's fairly close alrighty once this is glued that whole destroyed section is not going to take much work to, to put right. Okay, so hopefully that helps. The other issue you have quickly is this section in the base. It's actually your raised for the buildings, the non-street part. I've yet to come across a great idea on how to get some support because as you can see, well, if you can, this thing will flex. What I'm probably going to do is take some modeling clay or a couple of dabs or a couple of blobs in here, very separate with some glue between it and the plastic, some glue on top, and then I'm going to take some white foam board that's cut to size to fit inside here, to fit inside the perimeter properly, and mash it down in there and rely on the foam board that will be underneath to mate properly and firmly flatly against here and space across and using my modeling clay over here to match the support to give it some support off of what will be the foam core and by foam core uh, I mean this stuff just cut a corner off to show you I'm not going to fit the whole thing underneath the camera. So that's stuff people use for presentations. The paper on either side and then a little bit of some sort of foam in the middle. That will fill there nicely and that should give it just enough support to still keep the weight down on this thing. Uh, but still give it a little bit more strength and rigidity especially if it's laminated onto this and you'll have to use a specialized glue to do that I'm trying to think what I use if it's handy this is what I use 
something similar to this. It's a, it looks white, but it's not a white glue. You won't be able to use white glue in this application. White glue needs to breathe. And when you're placing it and basically trying to seal it in between plastic and foam, there's no place for air to get in or for the glue to evaporate uh, the water content out of, so it'll never dry. So you'll have to use something specialized like that. Anyway, hopefully that helps anybody who's never tried a mini art or is having problems with them or is just looking for an idea on how to make them better. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. And for anybody who speaks Dutch, I know there's a couple of people that model and you might be watching. If you can help me come up with Dutch versions of these, or I assume this is probably the same. This one's probably useful or use, reusable. Uh, but what I need is signs that will match these, but in Dutch so I can claim it's Arnhem. Let me break out the color one. <sighs> yeah. So these ones could be just about anything. I'm not even sure what the French is. Canada's bilingual. I'm not. Grandpa won the war, so I don't have to speak any funny foreign languages. Thank you. Uh, but if anybody knows of some... Dutch I could use it that would be appropriate on buildings like that, or some street signs. Uh, if you could let me know in the comments, I'd be most grateful. Thanks. Have a good one.